All right, cadets, this is Dr. Gordon Cook for MS 200 Lesson 35. We're going to start out talking about paragraph four, sustainment, and how we write that paragraph. Now, here are our learning objectives for this portion of the lecture. All right, seen those in the syllabus. Okay, so looking at our favorite uh, ATP for infantry, platoon, and squad, we see our responsibilities here. And uh, doctrinally, the platoon leader is responsible for the platoon's execution of the sustainment plan, okay? The platoon sergeant is your primary planner for that. So really the short answer for this entire lesson is let your platoon sergeant write paragraph four of the op order. Now, that doesn't help you very much for our final project. And as an officer, you do need to know how to put one together and what should be in there. Um, but just be aware that uh, this is something you should really work close together with your NCOs on and um, let them kind of take the lead in this portion. Let's start with the planning considerations and all the things you should be thinking about when you're putting together your sustainment plan. Uh, the first thing is types of support. So based on what operation and specific tactical things that are going on, what type of support is your platoon going to need? Uh, next thing about is quantities. How much are you going to need? Are you going to need expect to need emergency resupply, class three, class five uh, in the middle of the battle? Do uh, your operations require pre-stocking supplies uh, beforehand. Uh, the threat is always important. So what is the composition, disposition capabilities of your enemy? How will those affect your sustainment plan? Uh, where and when are you expected to be in contact that um, supply might be harder to do? Uh, what are your expected casualties? That's an important thing to think about. Um, and what are the impacts of any special weapons capabilities they have? that might bring in other supplies that you need, like if they have sea burn capabilities, you might want to make sure that you've got mop and chemical equipment available. And uh, how many enemy prisoners of war EPWs do you expect to, to maybe be picking up or having to deal with over the course of the operation? Uh, terrain and weather, as always, is important. Um, how's that going to affect your plans? Is the ground going to allow for security and maintenance of uh, casualty collecting points and log pack and things like that. Uh, what are your vehicle and CASVAC routes that you could take? Um, what are your routes for evacuating uh, contaminated personnel if uh, that happens uh, that you can use? Time and location of your operation. When and where are you going to need sustainment? Uh, based on the locations you're in, expected contact, what are the best sites to put a casualty collection point? Uh, where will EPW collection points be located uh, throughout your operation? All right, and then requirements. So what are your support requirements uh, by element in your, your unit um, for support? Uh, what sections have priority for emergency class three resupply, for example? What squads? might have priority for emergency class five resupply based on what's going on over a longer mission. Um, Cause really you can't always bring it with you. All right, uh, risk is something you need to think about. Um, are you gonna have lulls in the battle that are gonna let support elements conduct resupply operations relatively safely or do you have higher risk things going on? And last thing to think about is resupply techniques. So based on all the other information, uh, how are you going to do your sustainment plan? How, what techniques are you going to use to make resupply happen? All right, now here are some of the things that you need to address in your sustainment paragraph uh, of your op order. All right, so we have to talk about the basic equipment we want our soldiers to bring, what kind of loads they're going to be carrying, how we're going to split up any crew loads that have to go across multiple people, and what uh, teams are going to be responsible for those, All right? Coordinate your resupply, your resupply systems, um, how you're going to cross level things. Food and water for your soldiers, how much is that going to take across the entire mission and how are, is everyone bringing that until the next time you manage to get resupplied? All right, how are we doing maintenance? And then communicating to your soldiers in that uh, sustainment paragraph, how you're going to do your sustainment plan, what things might need to get rehearsed that come out of there. All right, and then along with this, uh, medical is also something that falls under this paragraph. How are we gonna provide uh, aid to anyone who becomes wounded or injured 
through the operation, which might not necessarily be actions on the objective. We can have other injuries happen along the way as we're traveling. Right, now, when we do our planning, you got to realize that there's uh, three kinds of loads that we talk about as we go through our mission. Um, first one's easy to think about is the fighting load. So this is what everyone's going to carry as they actually go into combat. So what are we carrying with us onto the objective, right? The most obvious thing is we need to have our weapon. We got to have uh, our helmets. Are we bringing protective masks and MBC gear uh, on the assault or not? Um, are we going to be wearing MVGs with us? Uh, and this is all uh, Met TC dependent for what you're doing and other things can get left behind and not brought. So this is kind of that basic equipment you want your soldiers to have on them through uh, the fight. The next one is an approach march load. So this is really when you start talking about putting on your rucksack. All right, so we're going out on the mission. We're getting to the approach to our objective. What do we got to bring with us? Because we're going to have to have food. Uh, if it's a multi-day operation, we might need sleeping gear. We might need uh, extra heavier uh, cold weather gear to sustain us through the nighttime. That Those are things we might not be bringing onto the objective when we go into combat, but we need to bring them with us for the mission. So we got to know what that is, and that's what we're bringing with us on the approach march. And this last one that we got laid out here is the emergency approach mark load. All right, sometimes there might be a need to bring some excessive amount of stuff. We kind of call that emergency because it's like you really don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to, um, you know, carrying in extra supplies and putting really heavy loads onto the soldier's uh, body to have to carry that in uh, on their own. Okay, so how do we actually do this and bring all these thoughts and considerations together? Well, we go back to our trusty battle book. Um, so here's one of the slides in the battle book uh, where you can write out your concept of support, um, just some description of what you're going to do. We can look uh, in our table here with each of the phases of our operation and then go down it for each phase. What considerations do we have for these key classes of supply? Um, I'm going to need water at the end of a long road march because we're out in the desert. I'm going to need to refuel because by now we've moved far enough that the vehicles I have are going to be, you know, down below a quarter tank. Um, ammunition, I might need resupply for that after we make contact with the enemy, uh, actions on the objective and how we consolidate after, things like that. So you can just lay that out as you go through your phases to get your thoughts together. Um, and really it's a matter of thinking about what classes support uh, have you had to use in the past? So you can think about your experiences in CFT. Um, what did your chain of command in the past do to sustain your squads? And then think about how you sustain your platoon based on what you're doing, right? So if you're out on the range, there are sustainment considerations. If you're just doing a training exercise, you still got to make sure people have enough water, have enough uh, ammunition to get through the exercise. Um, might be different than if you're out in the field and uh, in the woods, let's say, and how you're going to do that. So think through it. All right, now this is just an example of that battle book page all filled out. Uh, so you're going to have this as a reference, give some ideas of what kind of things we're putting in across all the phases of our operation uh, to fill this out. And then the next slide in our battle book, um, we can again go through our phases and think about our contingency plans. Come up with our medical plan. What are we going to do? Where are we going to locate our CCP along the way? What's our EPW plan? So when you're giving your order, you want to think through all these issues, lay them out, and, and just have a plan thought out and put down on paper.